have a scenario of a foot entrapment. The water conditions don't allow us to position the victim uh, in the water well, so we've just stuck him behind the rock just for this activity. Obviously, we've got a lot of staff here. In an emergency services world, you're probably going to have these staff. But as a canoeing instructor, you've probably only got two or three staff. So your priority here is to have a guide on each side of the river who are smart and qualified and trained. Their job is to get the line across first and set up what's called a stabilisation line. This, the line they're setting up here will be the stabilisation line and their job is to put the rope up underneath the victim's arms in order to keep his head up above the water just so he can breathe. So if it was me and I had that many people on that side, I would send two people up there. I'd have one person here. That person there was, would have a role of joining the ropes together. From there, he could throw a throw bag across to the guy up there in order to speed up the process. This is taking long, uh, taking too long in order to get that stabilization line in. This line should be set up in under a minute. So it's a matter of getting the rescuers across the river, line across the river, rope under victim's arm. The victim down here in the blue and white, blue jacket, a white helmet, his foot stuck in a rock. Normally the water pressure would be pushing him underwater. So by putting the line up under the arms like this, it allows him to relax and breathe um, and he is able to maintain an airway. That stabilisation line is the priority line out of all foot entrapments. We'll notice how long it took them to do that. It probably took about a minute or two. Okay, that's probably slightly long. So you've got to work out a way of speeding that process up. There you go. You'll notice this stabilisation line, um, it should be shooting off at a 45 degree angle to the victim. So these guys need to move up further, upstream, in order to create that 45 degree angle. But at the moment, it seems to be working. These guys are now setting up a secondary line. This line's, the stabilisation line is set up just to keep his airways above and it's not to be used as part of the rescue itself. This second line is what's going to be called a weighted throw bag. Weighted throw bag is designed to be sent up to the victim. The rocks that are stuffed in the bags will then sink to the bottom of the river. Um, and go around his ankles. That line will then tuck up underneath the, the, um, the stabilisation line and that can be used to pull out his legs from the foot entrapment. Here you can see they're getting rocks. They're going to fill this bag up full of rocks in order to, cr to create the weight. So these bigger bags are quite good, you're going to fill it full of rocks, they're going to um, tension up that little strap there to keep the rocks inside. You'll notice once the rocks go out into the current, that water's going to raise the bags up to the surface of the river. So there is a chance that the victim may need to help us in the rescue by using his free foot, the foot that's not stuck, in order to push it down to his ankle. And that's a matter of one of these guys talking to the victim in order to um, tell him to push it down to his feet uh, to keep it down nice and low. The weighted throw bag now goes out. This eddy in here is probably going to assist them in letting it sink. So the guy here and the guy up there need to go under 
the stabilisation line and be further upstream of the victim. This is a fairly time consuming activity. However, the fact we've got the stabilisation line in gives us time. I would also recommend putting a marker somewhere on the water line to make sure that the water is not rising. But at the moment I can clearly see that rock behind the victim is just flowing over it. So that'll be my marker from now on. Laura, they need to be on the upstream side of them. That'll help them get it up. So I've just told the guy in the yellow helmet, the reason they're struggling here is the water current down here is so powerful. It's pulling really hard on this line here. If this rope here is um, nine millimeters in diameter, multiply that nine millimeters times 20 meters. That is a massive surface area for rope to be pulled through. So this is where I would get these two to be upstream and both of them pulling at an angle. This is the advantages of coming to do a swift water rescue course in that you experience the amount of pressure, volume, issues with ropes in water. I think it's stuck. Okay, they got it out. Andrew helped them there. Uh, Andrew helped them as the victim. Normally he wouldn't be doing that, but uh, he did. So the weighted throw bag um, should be roughly around where the victim is. If you can get it on their ankles, it's a bit softer for them. So anytime we're running a scenario like this, we're gonna have people on the upstream side. Their job's to look out for safety. That's called upstream safety. We're also going to have people on the downstream performing downstream safety. At some point, this victim is going to dislodge from it and he needs to be rescued. If he's unconscious like this um, and he floats, he's not going to be able to hold onto the um, stabilisation line. That top stabilisation line, you would normally get the victim to... Normally get the victim to hold on to that with their hands uh, at the final stages of release. That way they've got something to um, hold on to. Once they release, bit softer. So here we are, we've just finished that first scenario, that was everyone's first time, so we're just going to go through a bit of a debrief, hopefully you guys watching this will appreciate a bit of the debrief on what we can improve on. Even fully trained professionals are going to stuff up, there's going to be areas of improvement, so let's have a chat about this. What do you guys think uh, we did well in that scenario? <laughs> So he just said that the water pressure was too strong. Is that what we did well? Yeah. We, we, I think we, we split and... and um, Things they did well, did well was they, they the position. completed yeah. it, they got into their position so well, they said. In terms of managing the first rope, so the stabilisation line. Stabilisation line. So they needed a better 45 degree angle. Yeah, set up higher so you don't have to putting people in positions yeah, so higher um, is better. One person who connected the two ropes 
to then through a throw bag to someone who's pushing upstream can be a technique where you get the rope moving further and you're not sort of against the big fishing line. And then trying to keep it up out of the water for as much as you can so that you can see it and also it's not fighting that resistance. Uh, having someone positioned a bit further downstream so they can also watch it the whole time and you're patient and be coordinating. Um, it can be hard to sort of get drawn into the pulling of the ropes, but having that, particularly for the second line, because did anyone notice it got stuck on yeah. the rope? Yeah. And if we'd had someone there who could have sort of seen that and liaised around it, we were lucky our patient helped us there. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, also really making sure you as the rescue team are always in good positions with good footwork because we saw some almost slips over there when you were working hard on the ropes but even we don't need you know another person being swept down with the rope so always making sure you're solid or if you're not getting someone to help you be more solid. Now, I think on that second rope we tried to manage getting the centre of the rope in the right place. Yeah. They're just talking about the um, the length of rope, how much each side has in their hands. Yeah. So, so even trying to keep that one quite high and out of the water where we can. Um, um, one thing I learnt just here, ch chatting to these guys, the only time we're going to set a stabilisation rope under their arm is if they are still conscious and flailing in the water. So if they're, if they're face down and trying to, you can see they're still conscious, we need to get that rope under their arm to give them the support straight away. If they're floating face down and not moving, don't even worry with that first rope, because we're just trying to, we've got to get a person to them to get them out. So I, that sort of was a realization. The other thing with that second line, just remembering we always want to duck under the first line, under, because it's the lower rope on the bottom, and Remember the angles I said there, a straight line across the river, which we had, creates massive forces on each end. Yeah. So if we're able to get the line up above the 45 degrees, that will reduce that pressure of the vector pull. That line was creating a vector pull on you. That's why it was so heavy. So how do you start that? How do you do that from the start? Keep it up high above the whole time. Even have people here holding it. Then two people walk upstream with their rope. Are you ready? You ready? And go. Boom. Done. Keeping the lines up above the water the best you can. The other thing I suggest you do, when we send four over, the fastest swimmer, the first one to get up, they should be at the rock ready to receive the rope. Because their job's to catch a rope, join it together, and then throw the bag up to the next clown. All right? So the people swimming over, they shouldn't be the ones throwing the rope over because you're exhausted. The last things you want to do is spam with a rope. So it's us on this side. We should be going out as far as we can to minimise that distance. All right? And we're the ones throwing them. And even put a carabiner on the end of it so they don't have to think. Once you connect that, that rope gets thrown over. We connect it on that rock platform just there. Yep. Then you were saying then that person throws, can throw another rope to speed it up. Yeah. Whereas so that's going, that's going up is that on? You want me to point it no, out? No, no, that's so right. 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 Hold that up. Yeah. Yeah. The second rope's gone up. Yeah. They're joined there and that joined there. So you yeah. pass me your throw bag. So I've swum over to River Right. I'm the first one over there. You've thrown me this bag. I've caught the bag. Yep. Now you think about it. I've got to now throw the bag from there up to them. So I need to join this end, like this, carabiner, uh, yeah, yeah. now I can throw that in. Yeah, yeah. It's better to do that than undrunk, dump it on the ground, having to coil it again, and then still stuff up your coil throw. See what's happened? Yeah. Yeah. Don't cheat by putting a bodgy knot in. Always tie solid knots here. This is the line that's maintaining their airway. Uh, this is a foot entrapment scenario. 
We've got victim, victim in water here. We've got people going over river right. So the first primary job is a stabilization line. So they've decided that this guy is going to be the first person to receive the rope from this one. So rope's going to go over. This shot has to be accurate, guys. And that was dreadful. Always have availability for a second bag. This here is the second time they've performed the training activity. So this one should be a little bit better than the previous one. Let's see how they go. Uh, good save. So one of these guys should be walking upstream soon uh, and their job's to receive the rope. So this guy's joining a rope together to then throw up to this person who's going to be upstream. They've decided this time they're going to have the ropes above the water now whenever they're moving the ropes because water and ropes uh, create a lot of drag. So we're saving time by this guy throwing a rope to this lady who can then even throw the rope from there upstream in order to speed up the process of getting the line upstream. Their job is to get the rope, their job is to get a line across the river just below the victim. They've chose to enter the water downstream uh, as that is the safest option for them to send rescuers over. You'll notice now the rope here is floating above the water. That's great. That's saving so much time. Um, and the, again, the line's got to go underneath the victim's arms. They're doing phenomenal effort here. Once that rope goes under their arm, the rope should go up at an angle of 45 degrees upstream of the victim. That creates a lot easy, uh, less pressure for the rescuers on the bank. So now there looks like they're um, averaging out the rope line. So where the rope's joined in the middle there with a the throw bag, that's the center of the rope. So they should put that towards the victim more in order to share the amount of rope on each side. This is hard work. The fact that they're having to maneuver all the way along this bank uh, with overhanging trees, it's really hard. The other option they could have decided is walk out here and then throw the rope over to that rock ledge. But they chose to do it the hard way uh, and that's probably good for training. So river right bank over there, they need to move further upstream to create that 45 degree angle. The straighter that line is across the river, the more pressure each anchor is, okay? You can help him, Andrew. So the guy in yellow jacket and black helmet, he's in charge, he's the leader. The leader should generally be hands off, but he's been a little bit involved here. The fact that he's got, the fact he's got very few staff here available for him, sometimes the leader has to get involved. So now they've got the angles of the rope at 45 degree angle upstream, that is good. That rope gets quite heavy in normal current. The fact that Andrew is standing is that the reason the rope's so um, slack and easy to hold. But normally you may need two people on each line. Once it's set up, the guys doing the um, holding the ropes now are generally the guides or the most senior people who can make it happen. Now they should step away from that position and pass that role on to less experienced people. That frees up the experienced people in order to come and set up 
the, uh, the rescue plan. These guys have been asked to set up a weighted throw bag, which we did before, as well as a cinch. A cinch is a uh, way of re-deflecting the pull around the feet to one side of the riverbank. Now that this stabilisation has been put in place, this gives the rescue team time to just chill out, think, have a plan, have a secondary plan. Andrew's able to stay in that position for quite a long time now, as long as he's maintained his airways. Again, that stabilisation line should not be used in order to pull him out of that position. Now they're working on trying to get a rope back across the river. So the fact that this guy here has moved further out into the current, that minimises the distance between him and him in order to ensure their throw is spot on. That distance they've got now is probably about 11 metres, 12 metres. So just pushing the boundary of most people's throws. And the fact that this guy's trying to throw from the water, it's very hard to get your um, speed and angles. So he's missed that throw, that's okay. Again, we've got time now, we've got time to chill out. So another throw bag can come from this side if you want. So this rope here looks like better, uh, bigger rope. So the fact that he was at groin height in the water, that makes it hard for him to throw. This guy here is at knee deep height. That allows him to get a better throwing position. He could even walk further out than that by about a metre. Okay, that was a good throw. Absolutely perfect. Again, they're keeping the rope up above the water. It keeps it nice and high and not in the water to drag. Now they've got this in place. It's up to River Right over there to set up the throw bag with weighted rocks in it. Okay, they also need to join that throw bag onto another throw bag to make two throw bags. We've done this weighted throw bag before. The only thing different with this one here is the fact that we are going to do what's called a cinch. You'll see a cinch in a second. So now they've joined the throw bags together. The throw bags will be pulled across the river in order to position the throw bags with rocks in them at the victim's uh, feet just here. So we've realized how powerful the water is with just rope in the water. As soon as we introduce rocks and um, bags, that becomes extremely heavy and the water pressure is so strong. So what they've decided to do now from the lesson learned on the last one is that it's really hard to walk the rope in um, back upstream uh, when the rope's in the water. So what they look like they're doing now, which is smart, the orange, sorry, the guy in the uh, red jacket, yellow helmet, he's going to hold the rope there. A guy over here is going to hold the rope and they're going to shuffle the, um, the throw bag through above the water and then allowing yellow jacket to walk upstream with a loose rope that is absolutely brilliant so this is common sense playing here the fact they've got time to kill um, because victims stabilize this is the way to do things stop and think chill out relax do it properly and as you can see here this plan will work absolutely perfect Laura.
So for me, I would have preferably had that bag closer to the victim before I let that go. Those bags out in the current are going to be so powerful, but they are doing it um, smarter than before. So again, if this bag doesn't quite sink to the victim's feet, you need to talk to the victim and say, hey victim, use your other foot to push that down to your ankle. Hey victim, can you use your free foot and push that down? But you can bring it up for the activity. You can bring it back up if it's painful. Okay, so this is good here. We've got the weighted throw bag there. <coughs> if for some reason the weighted throw bag um, does not assist you in getting the feet out from entrapment, the feet may need to be pulled at a slight angle upstream. This is where we introduce what's called a cinch. A cinch is where we join another throw bag with a carabiner onto the uh, foot weighted throw bag line. Okay, that will force the, um, the bag and the carabiner to slide back down to the victim and allow us to pull in a certain direction. So these guys are connecting it to this side, river left bank. They're going to throw a throw bag over to river right. And that allows them to pull at an angle. So guy's going to throw a rope over, that was a really good throw, he's a really good thrower this guy. So that rope's connected to the foot entrapment line, it's been zipped down the line and uh, it's about there at the moment, you can just see it. That rope will allow, that rope will allow to uh, pull the foot entrapment line that foot entrapment line uh, at an angle. So the reason it's not going down further is that the rope's not in the water. It needs the water pressure to slide down. The fact that those throw bags are at the guy's knees is keeping it up too high. But the current out there where the water is, where the rope is now, uh, that should force it down. There it goes now. So now we've got the cinch set up. So the top line stabilization, the bottom line is foot entrapment, the weighted throw bag, and the line that's going across to this guy over here, that is what we call a cinch, C-Y-N-C-H. That allows them to pull in slightly sideways against his leg. <coughs> 